Welcome to Hansing United Methodist Church. We are delighted that you are worshiping with us this day. It is Pentecost, friends. This is the day that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and the church of Jesus Christ began. And so we invite you uh, during this time to experience the sweetness of the Holy Spirit in our time of worship today. And as we begin, we invite you, as Lana Kingdom will play in just a moment, to gather your candle, to light it, to remember that Christ is indeed in our midst, to center your heart and your thoughts upon the Lord during this time.
are delighted that even though um, things look different in church these days, that there are some things that are remaining the same. And we um, are delighted that we have with us a summer intern, an Isaiah uh, ministry intern that is from the Kentucky Annual Conference. Uh, Liza Love will be joining us this summer and will be um, coming alongside our congregation to help um, minister with us and to us, and we are delighted to have Eliza with us. She has just graduated from Birmingham Southern College, and we uh, congratulate her on that, and she plans to attend Duke Divinity School in the fall. And so, Eliza, we are delighted that you're here. I invite you to come. She's going to lead our time of prayer this morning. It is so good to be with all of you. Um, and as we come into this time of prayer um, together, I invite you to take a moment um, to rest your body, rest your hands, um, and to just be. Let us lift our hearts to the Lord. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. Wherever we are, God, may you be present. We pray this day, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit consumes us as we journey through these times of anxiety. God, we ask to be made aware of you this day. As we struggle and attempt to understand the world we live in, we also acknowledge and are thankful for your unwavering and steadfast presence that covers us in love. As we feel lost or out of control, living into these unknowns, let us dwell in the presence and power of your Holy Spirit, that it might be tangible and transformational. May we know the promise of more through the experience of your Holy Spirit. In our brokenness, bring us to life, resurrect our hope and faith, and draw us closer to your grace. Let us be joyful and aware of your overflowing goodness as we strive for abundant life through you, O oh Lord. God, we know that it is your grace and glory that binds us together as community, your beloved people. In our pain and grief, we gather and celebrate the gift of this Pentecost day, laying aside our resistance to understand as the Holy Spirit guides us to be one together in communication and love, for we are never alone. God, you are the peace within, in the mundane and the miracles, in the silence and our doubts. You are the explanation and the unexplained. You are everywhere, working in us and through us. Accompany us in the days ahead, and may we worship you in spirit and truth, making us to be a people that follow you. Come, Holy Spirit, come, and hear us as we pray the Lord's Prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Eliza. It is, to, it is so good to have you here in our midst for this summer. I want to thank you for being faithful, for your generosity that you continue to give in these uncertain times. We are grateful for your gifts and your tithes and your offerings. You'll see here um, on the screen where you can send those gifts uh, to the church. We invite you, if you are a member of another church or participating in another church, to give faithfully to that church um, it, during this time. You'll also see the online option for you to give. This is a time for us to celebrate what God has given to us and what he has done for us 
and how generous he has been to us. And so let us give these gifts back to God. Lord, we give you thanks for each gift that you give to us. We know it is, it is from you. It is a gift from you. And so we want to be uh, generous givers to your kingdom and for your kingdom's sake, Lord. So use these gifts in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We are delighted that Mary Blair will be sharing with us in song during this time of uh, us centering ourselves and offering ourselves back to God.
And again, we're thankful for this time that our children, we invite any children in your homes to come and to hear the word uh, proclaimed in children's song with Miss Sandra. Go. Okay, boys and girls, it is your time. Good morning, boys and girls. If you are watching online this morning with your family, I hope you're happy and healthy and I want to wish you a great day. We're going to begin children's sermon this morning by reading from God's Holy Word. And God's Holy Word is the Bible. And today I'm going to read from the second chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and the whole house where they were sitting, filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, when I read that passage of Scripture this morning, and I thought about this being Pentecost Sunday. All of these things together just, just, just happened, happened to remind, to remind, you remind of me story. of a story. Well, today is a very important day. It's a special day. And we call it Pentecost. And we have been looking forward to this day for 50 days ever since Easter. And Pentecost is special because of two important reasons. Now, do you remember that Jesus, was, when he was preparing to go to heaven, he made a promise to his people. And he told them, I'm going to leave you, and I'm not going to be able to be a man on the earth any longer, but I'm not going to leave you by yourself. I'm going to leave you with something else. I'm going to leave you with the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is something special that we can each feel inside. It's what helps us to know God's love. It helps us to live good lives, and it helps us to be able to share with other people what we know about God and help them to learn more about God. So after Jesus went to heaven, the Holy Spirit came down and descended upon the disciples. It came down on the disciples. And it was such a special feeling for them that they wanted to share it with everybody. So they went out into the street and began telling people about Jesus. And guess what happened? They did such a good job that before they were finished, 3,000 people were baptized and became followers of Jesus. Now, you might say that Pentecost is kind of like a birthday. It's the birthday of the church, the day that the Holy Spirit so filled our hearts that the church was born. And here we are, almost 2,000 years later, still feeling God's love, just as they did on the first Pentecost. Now, when I think about the Holy Spirit, I think about it being just a great big hug from God that gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. Can you feel it? Me too. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for sending both your son Jesus and the Holy Spirit to earth to teach us about your love. Help us this week to spread your love and your word. Amen. We are thankful that we continue to journey through the 23rd Psalm together to be reminded of these wonderful words that bring us comfort and joy. And we come this day to recite those words. Again, I, I encourage you in times of anxiety, in times of stress, maybe at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, that you would take time to pause to recite these words in whatever version that you are most familiar with, to pause and to give thanks for them. 
So today we'll be reading, and I invite you to read these words with me. We'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we come this week on this Pentecost day to the place in Scripture where we're most familiar with this psalm. This is what we come to look forward to hearing in our times of, of deep valleys. And I think it's because it's a place, it's a condition that we all relate to. We all go through valleys in our lives. We all go through deep and dark times. And so we can relate to the psalmist when he says, even though I walk through the deepest, darkest valleys. Sometimes it's described as those deep darkness, the shadow of death, those places where we fear the most. I think currently we are living in a valley. I think COVID-19 has moved us as a nation and as a world global community into a place where we're walking through a deep and dark valley, facing a lot of unknowns, facing a lot of uncertainties. And especially as the country begins to open up again and we begin to figure out what our next step is and, and how to go about living life, we continue to ask questions. Will I catch COVID-19? Will one of my family members or my friends, will I be a carrier and not know it? How will my job continue to be impacted by this? How long will this last? How long will things be disrupted? COVID-19, though, is only one of many valleys that we may have experienced or are continuing to experience. Valleys come with addiction, with broken relationships, with wayward children and wayward parents. It is the valley of sickness at times, chronic illnesses, cancer, depression, watching children grow up and leave the nest, watching parents grow older. It's a valley of grief of those that have gone before us, those who have died that we love so much. You know, it's interesting that in this passage, it does not say that we will be delivered from that. It does not say that we will never go through a valley, that God will protect us and we will only stay on the mountaintops. Indeed, it says, though, we will walk through it, but with this condition, that we will not go alone. The psalmist says, I will not fear the valley. I will not fear the circumstances of my life. I will not fear what happens next. I will not fear the evil that comes my way because you are with me. There's an interesting shift that happens in the scripture, in the psalm at this point. Up until this point, David has talked about uh, the good shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And he used my terms but refers to God. And now he turns and he starts talking to God to the good shepherd, for I know that you are with me, for I know that you are with me. He is talking directly to him, and I think we can 
we can get in a place in our relationship with God that we talk all about him. But we need to talk to him. We need to share with him, especially when we go through the deep, dark valleys. The psalmist says that when we go through these valleys, that we will fear no evil. Remember back in John 10, 10, how Jesus says that the, st- the thief will come to kill and to steal and to destroy. But he has come to give us life and give it abundantly. And so we do not have to fear evil. We do not have to fear the thief that comes to kill and to destroy and to steal because we know that we are not alone. We do not walk through the valleys by ourselves. The Lord is on our side, and a good shepherd never leaves his sheep. Never leaves his sheep. So we say with the psalmist in the midst of our valleys, you are with me. I invite you to say that with me now. You are with me. Let's say it again. You are with me. In every situation, you are with me. In every dark trial, you are with me. When my loved one dies... You are with me. When I experience deep disappointment, you are with me. In every distressing dilemma and situation, you are with me. In those moments when I begin to panic or have anxiety, you are with me. On those nights when I can't sleep, You are with me. When I am stressed, you are with me. When I am alone, you are with me. So how do we know that the Good Shepherd is with us? How can we be assured of that? In the last few days of Jesus' life, he talked about what would happen When he died and rose again, he gathered his disciples together and began to share with them the last teachings before uh, his death. And he said these words to them. In fact, it is best that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, won't come. But if I do go away, then I will send him to you. And I ask the Father, and he will give you the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will never leave you. He lives with you now, and later he will live in you. We can be assured that the Good Shepherd is with us in every valley because the Holy Spirit comes to live and to move and to have its very being inside of us. Today is Pentecost, the day that we celebrate God giving his Spirit to his disciples. It is a day when Jesus' words were fulfilled, when the Holy Spirit came to live and to empower the disciples, to give them the comforting and assuring presence that God was indeed with them, but also to give them power and authority and strength to live the mission that he had called them to fulfill. You know, as a pastor and a preacher, I am amazed at how the Holy Spirit works at times, often in spite of me. Weeks ago, in the midst of uh, the beginnings of COVID-19 and the the beginning of this crisis, I had changed what I was going to preach on for this next series and decided to preach on Psalm 23, not really thinking through about Pentecost and the Holy Spirit. And yet, coming up to this day and seeing which phrase we would be focusing on in the 23rd Psalm, I was amazed how the Spirit went before us so that we can weave these two things together. For indeed, it says, not only you are with me, but your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That is, these are symbols that the Holy Spirit represents a staff, and a rod. A shepherd's identity 
is indeed his staff. If you saw a picture of, of a shepherd, you would know that he was indeed a shepherd because he has the staff, the, the crooked uh, staff in the picture. That is part of who he is. No other person has a symbol like that. And you don't use a staff with any other animal, not with cows or horses or pigs, only sheep. And the staff symbolizes compassion and concern. It speaks of kindness and patience. The staff can be used to draw the sheep near to the shepherd, for the shepherd to inspect the sheep, to check them over. We'll talk about that more in a few weeks when we talk about anointing our head with oil. But the shepherd draws in gently, kindly, compassionately, and yet firmly draws the sheep into himself. It is these days in the valleys that the Holy Spirit comes alongside us, gently, lovingly, firmly drawing us in to the Lord, to the, to the good shepherd, that his staff is used to remind us of his identity, that indeed he is the good shepherd in our life. The Holy Spirit, like the staff, comes alongside us to guide us and lead us and to say, this is the way, walk in it. This is how I will lead you. How many of us have gone through deep and dark valleys? And when we look back, we're able to see how we grew closer to the Lord, how we experienced his presence in assuring and comforting ways that we may not have experienced otherwise. I remember a dear friend of ours sharing with us how his wife, had, when, when she was going through cancer, and the treatments around that, how he drew close to the Lord, how the Lord had never seemed as present in his life as during that time. He felt God's presence because he drew near in that valley. That's what the staff does. That's what the Holy Spirit does, is draw us into the presence of God to bring us comfort that he is indeed with us. The rod was also used by a shepherd. It is usually a sapling that has been um, grounded down and shaped into a smooth, round head. And it's used to help prod along the, the, um, the sheep. And that they are, um, the rod is also used as a weapon to fight off any predators that are there. So the rod was seen as an extension of the arm, of the authority of the shepherd. And so we see that the Holy Spirit is very much the one who gives us authority, who gives us power, who gives us strength that we need as we walk through those valleys. The Holy Spirit came upon um, the disciples that day, that first day of Pentecost, so that they could have power we, we see that before he ascended to heaven, Jesus said to them in Acts 1, you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere. The Holy Spirit is the rod of the good shepherd that comes with the authority to give us power to be his witnesses, even in the midst of the valleys of our lives. Just a couple weeks ago, we talked about Peter, the disciple Peter, and how Peter had high moments, those um, mountaintop experiences with Jesus, and then he had his valleys. And we see that he, one moment he would proclaim that indeed Jesus was the, the son of the living God. He was the Christ. And Jesus would say, Peter, I'm going to build the church upon you and your leadership. And then then it was, we see Peter denying that he ever knew Jesus, that he, he wanted no part of him. And then we talked a, a couple weeks ago how Jesus and Peter had this beautiful moment of restoration on the beach, um, having breakfast after Jesus' um, uh, resurrection. And now on this day of Pentecost, 
in what must have been still a confusing and a bewildering time for Peter and the disciples. They had gathered together in the upper room to pray, and the Holy Spirit comes upon them and gives them power and authority. And Peter goes out that very day and preaches, boldly proclaims Jesus Christ. And 3,000 people came to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior that day. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He empowers us as, as the people of God to give us power beyond our own so that we can proclaim Jesus even in the midst of the valleys. So on this birthday of the church, the Pentecost, this day of Pentecost, and as the sheep of the Good Shepherd, we can come and boldly proclaim with authority and with power that indeed, even though we walk through the deepest and the darkest of valleys of our life, that we will fear no evil, for you are with us by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, and that your rod and your staff, they indeed, indeed bring us such comfort. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as we heard the beautiful imagery of Psalm 23, and uh, God is our shepherd, notice that when we sing this chorus, the words are, Jesus, O oh Jesus, come and fill the lambs. Jesus, O oh Jesus, come and fill with the Holy Spirit. of our valleys. 